What is up Broncos fans, the Denver Broncos show, Evan here back again, here to give you guys my recap for the Broncos first preseason game of the 2011 NFL season. We played uh, the Dallas Cowboys last Thursday in Dallas, lost a 24-23, um, really could care less that we lost, uh, you know, it's, it is preseason, so I don't care if we win or lose, I mean this, this uh, you know, the preseason is used for coaches to evaluate their talent and, and see which guys are going to make those last uh, couple roster spots. and get uh, your, you know, your team back in a rhythm and, and get them back in the swing of things, so to say. So I care less that we lost, uh, and, and, and it is what it is. You know, congrats to the Cowboys on the win. Um, this is a little late. I do apologize for that. Uh, I've actually been battling a cold the past couple of days, so I've been kind of upset with that, and, and that's kind of been the reason I haven't been able to do a video. I wanted to do a video right after the game on Thursday, so I do apologize for that, and I'm, I'm sorry that this is late. But I'm going to talk, talk about uh, the quarterbacks first and then just kind of go down the line, if you will. So getting to the quarterbacks, so starting off with Kyle Orton. I thought Kyle Orton had a pretty decent game here against the Cowboys. Uh, he completed two out of six passes for 37 yards, finished up with a 55.6 quarterback rating. Uh, like I said, I, I don't think Kyle Orton really had a uh, bad game, but I don't think he, he really had a good game either. Uh, he only played one series, so we, re we really didn't get to see much out of him. The highlight of the game for Orton was that 29-yard completion he had to Eric Decker. Uh, great throw and great catch by Decker, and great job by Eric Decker to, to catch the ball on and turn it upfield for a big gain. Uh, and, and, you know, Orton let us down into the red zone. You know, it was leading a pretty good drive there. Uh, we were unable to punch it in the red zone there. At the end, at the end had to settle for a field goal. That's been a big problem for us the past couple seasons. Our red zone uh, offense execution has not been good, and it wasn't good here either with any of the quarterbacks, maybe with the exception of Brady Quinn. Um, so that's something I would like to see us punch it in there. But for the most part, I thought Orton was, you know, decent. Could have been better at some things, but, you know, only played one series. And, and I thought he had a, a solid outing. Into Tim Tebow, uh, I thought he had a really good game. I really like what I saw to, uh, to uh, uh, Tebow. He uh, completed six out of seven passes for 91 yards and, and uh, finished up with a QB rating of uh, 118.8, which is just outstanding. Also had two carries for 15 yards. I thought Tebow looked really good. I thought he had a really good outing, really nice showing here against the Cowboys. He did make some minor mistakes. He still does focus on one side of the field. You know, focuses too much on uh, one receiver. He doesn't really progress through his reads. A lot of people have pointed that out, and I do agree with that. That's some he, he'll. Have to continue to work on and get better at, um, but he he was good for the most part. And uh, I thought the highlight of the game for Tim Tebow was that 43-yard pass he had to Matt Willis, which was just a great throw by him and a great job of Matt uh, Matt uh, Matt Willis to uh, beat the the Cowboy uh, Cowboys secondary to get open and get downfield. And uh, just a, just a great job by Tebow placing that ball uh, only where Matt Willis could get it, and that was a great job. Just dropped it right over the defenders. I think there was like two or three defenders on Matt Willis, and Tebow just dropped it right in front of him, only where Willis could catch it. I mean that that's, that was just a, a spectacular throw, and Tebow also had some other good throws. He had the one play uh, where it looked like he was going to get sacked, ran all the way to the left side of the field, uh, avoided the sack, then came all the way back to the right side of the field and, and still ended up completing a pass for a positive gain, and that's some of the stuff that Tebow can do. I mean, that, that play was overturned by a penalty, but still just a play in itself. That, that's the stuff Tebow can do that Orton can't do. I mean, Tebow can keep plays alive with his legs and just with his, his sheer athleticism. One thing he could do uh, and, and could improve on is, is getting rid of the ball a little sooner. That's something I'd like to see Tebow improve on, you know, having better pocket awareness, but that, that's things that will come with time. I mean, he's only in his second year, and the, the thing that annoys me the most is Broncos fans that want to put all this pressure on Tim Tebow and say he's the next L.A. He'll never be John L.A. He'll be, you know, Tim Tebow, and, and let him be Tim, Te Tim Tebow. I wish Bronco fans would let, wish Bronco fans would let him be himself and, and let him improve, uh, prove as a quarterback gradually. I mean, he's only in his second year, so for the most part, a really good showing out of Tim Tebow. Like what I saw, and I uh, hope to see him continue to uh, make uh, improvements in his game. And getting to the last quarterback here, Brady Quinn, I thought I also had a really stellar outing. Uh, finished up uh, completing 8 out of 14 passes for 120 yards uh, and finished up uh, with a 109.2 quarterback rating. Also had a touchdown pass. Uh, I thought Brady Quinn looked really good. I was really impressed, really surprised with how good he looked. Uh, he had a really slow start. Uh, really, it just seemed like he wasn't in a rhythm at all. Looked like there's some miscommunication between him and the receivers out there. Um, and looked, looked like he lacked in confidence. I mean, it, it, it looked, looked kind of like the same old Brady Quinn, if you will. He had one pass that was just, it was like he, he threw it into no man's land. There was no one, no no receiver even remotely close to the area which he threw the ball. And uh, he just had a slow start, but then he, it looked like he started to kind of assert himself, get into a rhythm, find a rhythm, and just get confidence and, and start really challenging the defense, moving the ball downfield, making aggressive throws, and uh, stepping up, to be honest with you. And, and I thought he really served himself after a slow start. Ended up finishing off uh, you know, uh, with a real good game. And I thought uh, 
the, the highlight for him was that touchdown pass. He had to, uh, Rowan Riley in the end zone. Um, not the greatest throw in the will, uh, world. I mean, it was a better catch by Riley than it was a, a throw by Quinn. But still a solid throw by Quinn to, to, to fit it in there into tight coverage and into a tight window and uh, put it where only Riley could catch it. And I, I thought that was an awesome throw by Quinn. I thought that was a highlight of the game for him. You know, Quinn had a really good outing. I was impressed by him. And I think he's making a really good push here uh, to, to be, uh, you know, the second string quarterback and maybe if not the eventual starter if Orton gets hurt or if uh, Orton starts playing really badly. So like what I saw to Brady Quinn and Tim Tebow, I thought Orton had a real solid uh, sh uh, showing. I thought for the most part all three of them performed well. To the running backs here quickly, uh, Jeremiah Johnson led the team with four carries, 28 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, he had the only rushing touchdown of the game for us. Uh, I, I like what I saw to Jeremiah Johnson. He's a really tough physical runner. Hits the hole real well. Uh, you know, never keeps it. You know, never uh, stops his legs from moving. Always got his legs going. Uh, and I just like the way he runs. You know, tough physical runner. Uh, could be a nice complimentary back to Noshawn Moreno. It's kind of like a change of pace back where you know we could use a real physical big back. We kind of have that with Willis McGay. That's why we signed him. But uh, Jeremiah Johnson definitely uh, is making a case to to get on this team. You know, make the roster. And uh, maybe if you know McGay, he goes down with an injury. Um, you know, I'm hoping that doesn't happen. But if it does, I, I'm, I'm real confident Jeremiah Johnson can kind of fill, fill that role for us. So I really like what I saw to him to see him uh, with that Bronco uniform on. He only had two carries, but he finished up with 17 yards. He had a great 12-yard run where he showed great vision on the run. Uh, did a great job of cutting back and just turning it up. Phil, that I really love what I saw to Willis McGay, and uh, to get 17 yards on two carries is pretty impressive. So I uh, like what I saw to all of our running backs. Even Lance Ball was pretty decent. And I look forward to seeing how that position plays out because we've got a lot of backs on this team right right now. Now, now getting to the wide receivers, uh, Matt Willis led the way. He had two catches for 50 yards. Like I said, I had that great catch uh, from uh, Tim Tebow, that, that awesome throw by Tebow. Great catch by Matt Willis. Great job to, to beat the defenders deep and get open. It would be great to see him stay healthy and actually make the, the roster this year. I think it would be a great you know, a fifth or sixth wide receiver for us. He's always been a guy that I, I've been uh, you know, pretty high on. And uh, just kind of injuries have derailed his chance of making this team and just kind of the depth we've had at receiver for the past couple seasons. Uh, so I'm hoping he can make this team this year. And I thought he had a really good first showing in this uh, the, this first preseason game. Uh, I mentioned uh, Rowan Riley earlier when I was talking about Brady Quinn. He also had a stellar game. Three catches for him for 43 yards and a touchdown. You know, the, like I said the, before, the touchdown catch that he had was awesome. Uh, that that, that uh, the pass he caught from Brady Quinn to, to catch it where he did. Great elevation by him to, to stay with it and still get two feet in bounds. Uh, I thought he was great all night. Uh, David Anderson, who uh, we acquired uh, via free agency, was awesome. Uh, took a couple shots, but I still thought he was pretty good. Had three catches for 38 yards. I think he could really make a push for being our third or fourth wide receiver. It's a guy I kind of undervalued when we signed him. I thought, you know, he's only going to be kind of a rotational wideout for us. But I think he can really challenge guys like Eric Decker and Eddie Royal for that slot position. He seems to always just get open and uh, he's got great hands. Like, and just touching on the defense here, just want to touch on some of the guys that stand out to, uh, stood out to me. Uh, Braxton Kelly had a real good game. Uh, he led the team in tackles with seven. Uh, you know, I, I thought he was good. He was all over the place making plays. Good to see Braxton stepping up. Uh, Kyle McCarthy, our second year safety, had a real good game. Three tackles for him and a sack. Uh, he did a great job on that safety blitz to get that sack. And they showed great recognition uh, throughout this game. Uh, did a great job of, of making plays and, and uh, making good Jason Hunter had two sacks uh, in the second half. Love seeing that. Jason Hunter had a real good year for us last year. But I really like Jason Hunter. I'm big, big on him. I thought he had a great year last year for us. And it uh, looks like that's kind of translating over to this year. Uh, lastly here, just to touch on uh, some things from a team standpoint that I thought we did good and some of the things that I thought we did bad. I'd like to see us improve on. Uh, we were 5-12 and 12 on third down conversions in this game on third down efficiency. I thought that was pretty solid for us. You know, that's almost completing 50% of our third down conversions. That was something we were awful at last year. We were god-awful. Uh, we were dreadful at converting on third downs last year. So good to see a little bit of improvement there. Like I said, almost completing 50% uh, of our third down conversions this game. Uh, one thing that I thought was that we did a terrible job of is penalties. Constant mistakes, constant penalties. We finished up with 10 penalties uh, that gave away 85 yards. That's something that must improve. That was also an issue for us last year. They're at 10 penalties for 85 yards. I mean, it is to be expected, though. I mean, the Bronx have only been in training camp for two weeks. All the teams, you know, they haven't had a ton of time to prepare. But still, 10 penalties is not good. Got to improve on that. Um, you know, gave up a couple big plays in this game. We gave up that 76-yard uh, uh, 
uh, touchdown. And I forgot the, the receiver's name for Dallas, but uh, gave up a big play there. Uh, gave up a, a big 18-yard run from Felix Jones. Our first-team defense did. And special teams can improve. Gave up a couple big returns, a couple big plays. My thoughts on uh, the Broncos' first preseason game. Would love to hear your guys' thoughts. Uh, always love hearing other Broncos fans' opinions, uh, opinions on the team. Love to hear your guys' thoughts on what you thought of, uh, out of all the quarterbacks. What you like, what you dislike, uh, of what you saw out of Orton, Tebow, and Quinn. Uh, you know, when the running backs, the receivers, defense. What you, who, who stood out to you guys? What you like, what you didn't like? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. I uh, always appreciate uh, feedback from all uh, all football fans, let alone Broncos fans. So looking forward to our next preseason game. It's going to be uh, this Saturday against the Buffalo Bills here in Denver. Good to have our first home game so, uh, of the preseason. Looking forward to that. I'll be back for a recap of that. And uh, that's all I got, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, oh, real quick, I almost forgot. just want to say I'm thinking about doing uh, kind of a, a video series, if you will, called 32 Teams in 32 Days. I know I'm going to have to kind of rush that. The math doesn't work, but I, I kind of want to... Uh, do a preview of each NFL team, give my thoughts on uh, what, what, I, what I expect and what I think the season outlook is for each uh, of the 32 NFL teams. It's the kind of idea I'm kicking around right now. I really want to do it. Uh, and I'd love to hear your guys' thought, thoughts of if you'd like to see me do that. All 32 teams, including the Broncos, do kind of a, a season preview for each team and do like a season outlook video. I've seen a couple other people try to do that in the past, and I think it's a real awesome idea. ESPN sometimes does things like that, and I thought I'd do it. I always like giving my projections and things like that because, you know, I love the game of football. I know you guys do as well so give me a take on that if you guys would like to see me do uh, something along those lines so i'm done talking hopefully this video uh, was short enough for you guys looking forward to this saturday when we take on the buffalo bills and uh, hopefully we get to see more of a, a, out of our first string so take care guys and as always go broncos